Welcome to Airborne from AirVenture 2019 at Whitman Regional Airport. I'm Sophie Herlock. Coming up on our program today, outgoing acting FAA Administrator Dan Elwell bids farewell to AirVenture. The Lindbergh Foundation looks ahead to a major anniversary. And part four of our interview with Jack Pelton. Those stories and more are coming up in this AirVenture 2019 special edition of Airborne Unlimited. The day before he was to appear at AirVenture, acting FAA Administrator Dan Elwell learned Stephen Dixon had been confirmed for the job. That didn't prevent him from taking the stage at Theater in the Woods with a positive message for EAA members in the annual Meet the Boss session. Here's Tom Patton with the story. Acting Administrator Dan Elwell held the annual Meet the Boss session at AirVenture Thursday. Elwell, who's been acting administrator since January of 2018, brought a generally positive message to the EAA members and others gathered at Theater in the Woods. Elwell said the rewrite of Part 23 was just the warm-up for the initiative called Mosaic, the modernization of special airworthiness certificates. This is a big one. We've been talking about it for several years, but when Congress last year asked us to change the rules, so that drone builders could use light sport type consensus standards, we saw a great opportunity to kick it into high gear. So here are just a few of the benefits for seven aircraft cate categories we're looking to modernize. For light sport aircraft, we'll be able to do things like safely bump up the maximum weight so that instructors can now have some margin when flying with guys like me who uh, enjoy a little too much Broughton beer, um, they'll have more weight. They'll have more weight allowance to do that. They'll also be able to have four seats and an electric motor. For experimentals, if they're not actually doing experimental work, they'll likely fit into a more appropriate special airworthiness category. So, we can say goodbye to those lovely, big, experimental stickers. And for Legacy, 20, Legacy Part 23 aircraft, an owner of a small plane that is not using it for commercial purposes will be able to exchange the standard airworthiness certificate for a special airworthiness certificate. That means the owner will be able to install lower cost safety equipment, the kind that is widely available for the experimental market without an STC or 337. Elwell said there would be some trade-offs with the new designation, such as no commercial use and no flights into Canada. He would not give a timeline for its implementation, but called it a huge priority for the FAA and EAA. Elwell said safety is the other side of the equation, and while there's been a downward trend in fatal GA accidents over the past several years, that trend may be reversed when the final data for 2018 is analyzed. And for my part, I will be convening a government industry GA safety roundtable this fall in Washington. We've already been in discussions with the GA alphabet groups. We'll bring to the table our perspectives on the causes of the increase in GA fatalities, and we're gonna look for ways to effectively address those causes. Interventions will be targeted and always based on data. We'll work with you and the industry to voluntarily make the changes, voluntarily make the changes that need to be made. Basically the same approach that the airlines have taken and that we've been using for several decades. We already need, we really need the general, avi general aviation community, the people in this room, all of you, to step up with that can-do attitude and work with us and industry to figure this out and turn it around. Elwell continued to sing the praises of ADSB, saying there have been studies which indicate that airplanes that are equipped with ADSB out and in we're involved in about 50% fewer mid-air and weather-related accidents between 2013 and 2017 than non-equipped airplanes. On the subject of the integration of unmanned aircraft into the NAS, Elwell said that there are a lot of very smart people working on that issue. They also have come up with some really out-of-the-box innovative ideas, particularly in the, in the construct of UTM. 
uh, UAS traffic management. Um, so it's very, very challenging, it's very complex, but we're committed to integration. We are not going to accommodate a new entrant by, by chopping off big swaths of airspace for them. They're going to be integrated into the NAS, uh, and there's certainly enough airspace for everybody, but, but we, have to, we have to make sure that we do it right. Elwell did mention that Stephen Dixon was confirmed on Wednesday as the next permanent administrator of the FAA, but said at a briefing for reporters prior to his appearance at Theater in the Woods that there is a 60-year-old law which prohibits both the administrator and the deputy administrator from being former active duty military personnel, and that both Elwell and Dixon are graduates of the Air Force Academy. It will literally take an act of Congress and the signature of the president for Elwell to stay on as deputy administrator when Dixon takes the administrator's job full time. At Air Venture, I'm Tom Patton. After the break, the Lindbergh Foundation looks ahead to a major anniversary. This is Airborne Unlimited on Aero TV. Evolution means avionics for innovators. As an aircraft designer, don't let your vision be constrained by someone else's limitations. Instead, let Avolution help your dreams become your customer's reality. www.avolution.com Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies, and we stand behind you. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited, coming to you this week from EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. If you've seen something cool around Oshkosh, let us know with the hashtag Osh19Cool on your social media posts. The Lindbergh Foundation is looking ahead to the 100th anniversary of the Charles Lindbergh crossing of the Atlantic. The foundation has some major plans over the next eight years leading up to the milestone. Rex Alexander chatted with Eric Lindbergh about those efforts. You're looking at celebrating the uh, 100th anniversary of your grandfather's flight. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, in 1927, grandfather Charles Lindbergh flew nonstop from New York to Paris, and it really shifted the world's perspective on what aviation could be used for commercial purposes. And aviation really grew extremely fast after that. So we, we ended up in the golden era of aviation. We're at 100 years. Mm -hmm. In seven and a half years, we'll be celebrating this anniversary. So in the meantime, with the foundation, we've set a mission of addressing the threats that we see in aviation. Right. So carbon and noise. We want to radically decarbonize aviation and reduce noise because those issues have the potential to threaten our infrastructure and the ability for kids of, of tomorrow to have the freedom that we have to fly around. So it's the ideal mission for a foundation to really address these things. Um, and we do that through really galvanizing talent, the younger people with STEM education, to get them to apply their, their smarts so that um, we can be quieter and cleaner in the future. And, and so as a goal, the 100th anniversary, we're gonna do prizes, awards, and, and events to really um, focus on that and reward and incentivize people who come up with solutions. Because I love round engines and noisy aircraft. I look, I'm an aviator, right. but we in the industry need this industry to be quiet, especially if urban air mobility or flying cars, EVTOL, airplanes are gonna come to scale. 
Epic Aircraft has received its type inspection authorization for the FAA, which brings it one step closer to certification. Tom Patton got an update on the program. Mike Schrader, Director of Sales and Marketing for Epic Aircraft. You've got a good milestone coming up. Uh, you just on the verge of getting some certification for this airplane. Tell us where you are in this process. Well, as of last week, we just re received TIA, which is Type Inspection Authorization. Uh, that brings the FAA on board for flight evaluation or the final flight evaluation of the aircraft. And where do you go from there? Uh, then we move on to type certificate. And then from there, we get our production certificate and we begin delivering airplanes. Do you have a timeline yet for where that might be coming along? Uh, we'll begin delivering air airplanes by the end of the year. So when we look at, uh, uh, we have three aircraft on the line right now. One's in final assembly and uh, two behind it following it closely. And we're gearing up for um, uh, one aircraft per month. Um, and then from there to, the, to a maximum of four aircraft per month or 50 a year. What's special about this airplane? Uh, it's new technology. Uh, as new technology you can get into aviation or aerospace. Um, it's all carbon fiber construction, uh, bonded structures. Um, we use the Garmin G1000 NXI, the PT667A, 1200 horsepower. It's flat rated at that, so uh, we're able to maintain uh, some amazing speeds at altitude, fast time to climb, all over best performance of anything in the industry. Getting a lot of uh, good interest here at the show? Uh, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of interest in the show. We've, uh, I'm sure we'll be pulling some orders from this show, and we're at already at uh, 87 reservations in the books. Perfect. Well, thanks very much. Thanks for taking some time to talk yeah. with us on AeroTV. Okay, great. Thank you. King Schools has been a staple in the flight training industry for years, but they are constantly innovating and keeping up with the times. They announced a new partner at AirVenture this year. Jim Campbell caught up with John and Martha King to get the details. You guys have kind of a really big change because you're talking about a continuity plan. Well, we are. Martha's getting a lot older. And, and John's never going to get older <laughs> now. <laughs> so, so we are going to uh, have a new, a new person who already has assumed some ownership in King Schools. We've been in business now, in this business, for 45 years and never had anybody had any ownership in a company besides us. And so Barry Canutula, who is our CEO, now has ownership in a company. And another shocking thing is that he's one of our instructors on video also. And, and the challenge is that we want someone who uh, connects on video, who's uh, warm and personable, and they think of him as a friend, and he's able to do that, and he's just marvelous. He's just a, he's a great partner in a company. What will the industry ultimately do without Martha and John, John and Martha, whichever way you want to put it, out there? I mean, you guys have been, I hate to use this word, it's so overused in media, but it's iconic. Well, uh, the point is that we're going to do our best to mentor Barry into a similar uh, situation because what really counts is does the instructor connect with the people? Uh, does he or she understand what they're going through? And, and are they able to, to reach through the camera, if you will, and make that uh, learning pilot feel comfortable and, and understood and share learning um, uh, techniques with them so that they really understand it. Jim, and we, we are slow learners, uh, but we, and so to demonstrate that, we have not retired and we're not going to. So we're still going to be around, we're going to still be instructors, it's just that we're sharing it with Perry. After the break, we'll show you part four of our annual Jack Pelton Air Venture interview series. You're watching Airborne Unlimited on Aero TV. Lockwood Aviation presents the Gen 3 Air Cam. Sport aviation at its finest. Now available with an optional third seat, gross weight increase, and more power. You simply can't have more fun than flying in an Air Cam. www.aircam.com. Why wait for the electric aircraft revolution when Pipistrol started it years ago? Pipistrol's Alpha Electro Trainer and the Pipistrol Taurus Electro Sailplane are here now. Check them out at pipistrol-usa.com. There's never been a better time to become a pilot. 
At the Sling Pilot Academy, you can get your private, commercial, and instrument ratings in nine months for less than $63,000 and do it in modern, fun airplanes. Your flight training is going to be as exciting as your future career as an airline pilot. SlingPilotAcademy.com Today in part four of our annual EAA interview, Jack Pelton and Jim Campbell discuss the overall health of the EAA and what may lie ahead for the organization. Well, starting with uh, the mothership, at EAA itself membership is very healthy. We're well over 220,000 now total members. We're seeing a lot of growth in the student membership and bringing in uh, younger demographics, which is, which is good because we have attrition at the top with people a aging out. Um, we still have to find a way to integrate the the vintage groups, the war bird groups, as to the, while they're they're separate 501 C3s, they're still part of EAA. Vintage, they've done a really nice job of creating a here is a lower price point entry into aviation and trying to educate people on a Taylor Craft or a Cub or an Aronka that this is a good way to start in aviation at a at something less than a brand new Skyhawk. So they're seeing a, a lot of movement in younger demographics seeing that as an opportunity. Our challenge there is, it's again about keeping them flying and keeping the regs, which is another part of our kind of our omnibus light sport EAB. We're also looking at how do we get non-PMA parts and those kind of things that will keep us old Cessna 195 flying that you can't find a tailwheel for because they don't make it anymore. The FA gets it, we're just not sure how to, you know, how to put the rules in place to do it. I'm an advocate of creating going back to primary non-commercial category and taking my airplane out of uh, the part 23 category that it's in and let me be able to work on it and use those kind of parts and if we let that fleet go I mean that's where the bulk of the airplanes are today mm -hmm. so we've got to work on that. Warbirds is a classic issue with they're just old expensive and trying to keep them flying takes dedication of people who have the wherewithal <laughs> to do that but you know it's the number one attraction at AirVenture people want to come see the Warbirds and see that piece of history that you can't see anywhere else. Home build is the fastest growing part of segment of our organization. So every year the number of home builds that are being licensed is greater than the Part 23 companies that are uh, registering certified airplanes. So that's encouraging. IAC, how are they doing? IAC is um, holding their own. I think their challenge is to figure out how to get a category of not even necessarily competition, but how do you get the guys in, I'll go back to car racing where you have that, that stock class where you can drive it to work on Monday and race it on Saturday. So could you do that with RVs or other airplanes? You know, you get it, an extra is, is now an entry level unlimited and, and that's a big step from taking your Cub out and doing a few loops and a few rolls. So they understand that and they're trying to work on how to expand that entry level and to get people into it. Paul, when IAC was created, it wasn't I called IC at the time. He always had told me that his goal was really to have that as a, a an area where people could go explore better stick and rudder skills. Mm -hmm. That he thought it was great for you to learn how to spin an airplane, how to loop it, how to roll it, have some fun with it, but really in, improve your proficiency. And uh, we need to kind of go back and capture some of that, I think, to to attract more people. Light plane, ultralight. Where do you see all that going at this point? There's a, a company out there today, and I'm remiss in not knowing their their name um, that's kind of seen a resurgence they, they've set up shop and they're selling a lot of them and they said that they're the uh, the buyer profile is is current pilots with heavy ratings like ATPs mm -hmm. that want to just go fun fly they yeah. just want something they can pull out go fly and not worry about their investment in it and they've got a big backlog and yeah and so uh, we're going to include that in our arsenal of getting back to both soaring and the ultralight as part of an introduction for young people as to there are some ten, fifteen thousand dollar entry points you can get into, especially with with fourteen year olds soaring. Yeah. Tomorrow, Jack and Jim will discuss Jack's future with the EAA. Well, that's our program for today. We'll be right back tomorrow with a look at the day's events from EAA AirVenture 2019 at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. And for the latest aviation aerospace news, head on over to aero-news.net. Thanks for watching.